Good morning, everyone. I'm Richard Chair, and welcome to People Are Talking on this Monday. We are live on Television Hill, and as you know, by watching previous programs on People Are Talking, that Satanism seems to be on the rise here in the United States. On this morning's program, you're going to meet a woman whose family, she says, is possessed by Satan. And we're also going to meet the potentate of the worldwide church of the satanic liberation and a priest who consults the Catholic Church about cults like Satanism. All today on People Are Talking. Welcome to the show, Lorraine Wilson, who has been dealing with satanic cults for as long as she can remember, from her mom and dad through her husband and her children. Yours is an unbelievable story. You are free now, would you say? Well, I would say I would, I'm free. Um, I'm not uh, concerned or intimidated or in any fear or um, hiding myself or anything from them. Uh, I've talked uh, frequently about their activities because I feel as though it's exposure uh, that will end up uh, maybe clearing this situation up. If I bring enough heat down on them, if I, um, you know, let normal people know exactly what goes on in those kind of situations, maybe we can get help for the ones who are in it and don't want to be in it. Not everyone is in it by choice. It's one of those kind of things where if you grow up in the situation, uh, like anything, mafia, whatever, um, you have no freedom of choice. You, um, uh, you participate or um, you go through a lot of physical, emotional abuse. Which you did, starting, I guess, uh, almost as young as when you were six. Tell us what was going on in your family at that time. Well, they were having different types of uh, rituals and things. I remember one time, I I'm not really sure how old I was. Uh, it was at night. There was this uh, darkened room, and the wickedness that was coming at, emanating out of that room uh, really was terrifying me. I remember a relative, I think it was an uncle, uh, was going in, and um, he picked me up to take me in that room. It was flickering lights and whatever. And... Um, I screamed and fought, and I wasn't forced to go in, but yet I had a younger cousin who didn't want to go in the room, but because she had been in there and participated before she had to go, and a lot of my... What happened in there, in that room? I didn't go in. I mean, what did you hear happen or think happened? <sighs> well, they were into... Um, you know, group sex, uh, animals, you know, uh, drinking of blood, eating of flesh, um, children, and all that sort of thing. So... Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry to stop you. Your parents were involved in this? My family. Your whole family. Family, right. Into... Aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, I think it was what you call a coven or whatever it was. Your you own know. the covenant. Your family was, was involved in... Neighbors. You know, it wasn't... Uh, a little, it was a little something behind closed doors with just a, a few small group of people. I mean, with just a couple of people. It was, you know, a lot of people. You have this pained look on your face while you're telling the story. I wondered it's, if you it, can translate that into words. I saw a lot of suffering, a lot of abuse. And it hurts to know that there are people out there who feel justified in having sex with children or, uh, of course, in animals. Gosh, that wasn't fun for them either. And uh, because it's something they want, because it's, it's not like it's, say, a quote-unquote religion, which is some, one of the things they try to make you believe. Well, if you're a Catholic or 
uh, Baptist, Protestant, you know, you're going to bring your children up in that faith. But that's different to, or Jewish. If you sit around and you uh, as a child come up and you don't understand the uh, the rituals or how they, the worshiping and whatever, it's not physically painful, whereas in Satanism and what and, and, and cult, you know, that type of cultism, there's physical abuse. It's not like, OK, uh, I'm growing up in this. Uh, you know, children don't have a freedom of choice with their religion anyway. But it's the pain. It's the suffering. It's the uh, degradation you feel. It's, it's the, the you, you, know, you feel as though you're not in a normal situation. You feel isolated. Uh, and then you're taught never to tell and not to talk to anyone. Uh, Just like child abuse. Exactly. The, the pain, the suffering that, that you saw during these years, uh, beginning at six and through your teenage years, and you're talking about sex with children and animals. What, what specifically can you tell us about that went on during that time in your family? I watched my mother and my son. You together. watched your mother and your son? I, I think that the most painful thing for me was that, uh, well, it started when when we were younger coming up and I watched all the physical abuse because I mean personally I figured I could take it because um, there wasn't you know I told him I'd rather be dead than to be one of them and they didn't take too kindly to that I guess no a couple times they they had tried to oblige whatever because when you to, have to kill you, you mean? Oh, sure. Because if you think about it, uh, you have a group here that uh, has an image to uphold, and they're trying to get uh, the younger ones to realize that they're all powerful, all knowing, all seeing. And you've got this little mouthy kid that's running around disrupting things, and they can't crack the kid, and they can't wipe it out, and uh, it made them look bad. You know, even though I, I was. Um, um, you know, uh, shunned by the others and hated by them, uh, and told that I told the my cousins and brothers and whatever, whatever that I was weird and strange and whatever because uh, I didn't uh, go along with what they were going along with. Um, it still made them look bad. And you say a couple of times they tried to make your wish that you rather be dead come true. This includes your parents. They, they tried you know, to see the thing yeah. is with with uh, the, this type of situation it, it's it wasn't a normal situation your parent didn't look at you as though this is my child for me to, to nurture and to take care of and to love either you were part of the group you know <clears throat> or you were considered an enemy of the group not a family member but just no. there's the group family and then there's exactly else. exactly so um, my well-being and uh, uh, life was just, it, you know, I didn't belong, so I didn't really need nurturing. I didn't need, uh, but then they were capable of that anyway. You're talking about people who don't love. They said love is a, uh, a form of weakness. They don't, um, uh, you didn't get sick if you could help it because or if you came in with some kind of sickness or some kind of pain, uh, uh, you were treated as though, like, well, so what? You know, um... Where did you turn? I mean, if you had no one to whom you could turn, how were you making it out there as a child? Hmm, praying. Um, well, since I learned about the the evil side, I knew about the good side. Mm -hmm. um, I had a choice to accept and go in and live like them or to... Uh, stay with the Lord and I stayed outside a lot and and I would say he gave me peace and uh, saw me through okay there I was fearful sometimes because there wasn't anyone to turn to and I didn't see uh, any help from anywhere I mean they always taught you to go to the elders of the covenant 
or whatever they call themselves because today they I don't think they like to be called witches and that sort of thing I think they like to be considered as even Christians some of them they call themselves all sorts of things trying to appear to blend you know but they um when you uh, they're not blending you said you saw your mother with your son what uh <sighs> How do you handle that? And, and I felt they they seemed as though I wasn't even there. I mean, I didn't know what to do. I, I it was uh. How old was I your could, son? I then. don't know. I think maybe he was seventeen, sixteen, something like that. I don't I don't really remember. Maybe he was younger. Uh, but I, I, it it was sort of like the. Um, that, sort of what I would say, like the last, I was like, that was, I mean, I loved my family. I felt that one day I could, you know, help them come out of it. And eventually I just had to uh, get away with what I could get away with that was left intact. I had two children that chose that lifestyle. And personally, I couldn't see if you knew the right from wrong or the good and the evil, you had the two to compare. Um, why? You, had, you had the two children uh, with a man named Howard, who was also in the cult. Or a, I don't know what he was into. No, that, that, I can't really say that. And I know he was, he was uh, uh, weak. Uh, he wasn't uh, uh, someone I could, you know, turn to or anything like that as, uh, for help. And, and uh, he was in the area, in the vicinity uh, where all that sort of thing was going on. So, but as far as an actual participant, I, I really couldn't say if he was. Okay, we're going to open up our phone lines now at 481-1313. You obviously are hearing this. There are people who worship Satan in our audience and those who think it's terrible. We want all of your points of view. 481-1313, more with Lorraine in a moment. <laughs> We're talking uh, today with Lorraine Wilson, and in a few minutes you're going to meet a man who's um, one of the leaders in the uh, satanic church. First, Lorraine, back to your story. Tell us, you, you've mentioned animal sacrifices and sex with children. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, to what end was this going on? I mean, what, what is it that you believe your family believed in at that time? If it wasn't God, what was it? What were they doing all these things for? Okay, well, I know um, people that uh, worship Satan are rebelling against God, okay? Uh, their ultimate end, I, I suppose, just to continue on with their rebellion. They hated uh, uh, a lot of things, and they, re they were resentful of lifestyles. They thought that the uh, normal home was... Uh, a sign of uh, weak people, and they wanted the power. They wanted the power over another human being. They wanted to be able to manipulate people, to control people uh, by any means necessary. Um, they uh, were concerned with uh, human life, per se, just their own um, sexual needs or desires, uh, their own... Uh, it, their wickedness was so within them and so intense that whatever, whatever whim they had, they just, you know, they would just go through with it. They, you know, as I said, what, are you, they, now, what are you talking about? In okay. other words, what, whatever they wanted to do, they would do in terms of what? Okay. Um, well, sexually speaking, whatever they wanted to do, there, there was no uh, controlling that they they didn't practice self-control at all uh they didn't uh uh inhibit themselves in any area uh as far as you know like the eating they ate anything they wanted to eat you know to gorge themselves on this it, as to uh i guess just the freedom to do whatever they wanted to do it's just like no holds barred you know let everything go and then they condemned uh, anyone who wasn't uh, a part of them. Can you or share with us uh, 
the worst situation, I mean, of course, your mother and your son couldn't be much worse, obviously, but uh, something else, some ritual, some animal bloodletting or anything that you, that you experienced and saw yourself, not something you just heard about, but something you witnessed. Um, Where not you? other than, not other than what I had already told you. Okay. Now you you married. Uh, you did not marry uh, Howard. No. You had two children with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a drinking problem. Yes, he did too. He he didn't at first, but he uh, last when I saw him, he did. Was he abusive? Yes, he was. Was he abusive with your children? Uh, you speaking of Stanley or Howard? Uh, first Howard. Howard. Okay, Howard uh, went off into the service. was one of those uh, teenage things trying to escape the situation. Sure. And, you know, you just don't escape it. You just go from one situation out in the front hand <coughs> into the fire kind of thing. So, right. And then after that, then uh, I met Stanley, and we married, and that was another out of the frying pan situation into another fire. Uh, he had no uh, uh, inner strength. Still doesn't. And, uh, Still doesn't. What, why did you hook up with him? Why do you think you hooked up with these guys? Oh, God. I mean, I wasn't in a normal situation. I was running. I was trying to find ways out. and um, But the roots were there, so I didn't really run, but so far. Was Stanley because, involved in this, too? I would say he became part of it. He got uh, caught up in it. I know he's with my sister and my, my oldest daughter. and. You say with. You mean sexually? Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess you didn't stay with him long. Well, I no, I was married, and then it was the other people, my sisters, and different other things going on, and that was just enough of that. And um, when he, my daughter hadn't been born yet when we were married, and uh, so he, she was, he was the only father she ever knew, and she, uh, when uh, she, I guess when she was about sixteen, I think. Uh, because of what she had been taught by my family, she, she, uh, you know, uh, became lovers with him. Um, I stopped dating because um, anyone I ever dated, she, if she could, she would. Uh, any way they could. Uh, did you talk to her about this? Yeah. Did you yell at her, or scream at her? I mean, what? Yeah. What do you say? What did she say? She just cried. But it didn't stop her. You can confront them. It doesn't stop them. The truth will make them cry sometimes. The truth will make them say, so what? What would are you, you going to do about would it? Would you say all of these people, all the children, the, grand, the, the parents, the, uh, the Howard, the Stanley, all were possessed, would you say, by Satan or by the devil? What, what would you say these about These are non-believers. Okay? These are people that don't believe in God at all. Don't believe in, they believe anything they want to believe. Anything goes, okay? They don't, they, they would tell me that um, I wasn't corrupt enough, you know. Why don't I denounce my God? All kinds of things they'd say to me, you know, um, because they like their lifestyle. They want to uh, have the freedom of choice, they call it. And one of the other things with the uh, adults, the, the, the parents, it's their job to teach their children sex, physically teach them, you know, you know, they're supposed to be the best teachers, or, and that's supposed to be part of their parental duties, and, and uh, that shows that they love them. Why did you leave the Philadelphia area and come <laughs> to Baltimore? Why are you in this area now with your daughter? Normal people live here. There is uh, a healthy respect for God here, even though they're not church, people aren't, aren't churchgoers. Uh, I feel as though the pressure's off, I can breathe, I'm not uh, being intimidated, uh, into trying to uh, become part of something that I never wanted to become a part of. I have freedom of choice here to serve the Lord and, and be happy serving the Lord. I can even stand out in the street and say, thank God, and not worry about a rock coming upside my head or something. Uh, I can, um, um, my, my door is, uh, she just came from the, the uh, she went to junior prom and, she and a group of girls got together in a limo and all that, and they didn't take dates, the new modern girl. And um, Maybe she's smart. <laughs> and she's, real, she, she's enjoying it. We're getting on 
with our lives. I feel as though now I can live. I, I remember as a child, there was this cartoon where the lame children and the abused or the, the unwanted or unfed children, uh, the Pied Piper would come and take them all away and open up this mountain. They could go in and play and they were uh, healed and healthy and all that sort of thing. And uh, that's what I've always looked for, a place where I could go in, under the sun, where I could live, love, serve God, and um, live a normal life. I knew what they were doing was not normal. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> We're being joined now by Paul Valentine, who is the potentate of the Worldwide Church of Satanic Liberation, a church which he helped to found on January 8th, 1986. Uh, reading the background that you provided us, the church states that Satan is the force that rules the world. You say go for everything, everything physical, emotional, mental, any sexual desire, just go for it. Now you heard what Lorraine had to say. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know, and I'm sure our viewers would like to know, what, what it is that the Worldwide Church of Satanic Liberation st says. Well, first of all, I'd like to say um, that I would like proof about anything you went through. Um, I don't believe much of it. Uh, you don't seem to be able to remember anything as far as dates and ages. And why, in the name of any God you believe in, did you stay in as long as you did and let your 16-year-old son have sex with his grandmother? Okay, now before... As as the church, oh. Paul, before... You start your attack. Mm -hmm. I want you to answer my question. Okay. I want to know what the Church of uh, Worldwide Church of Satanic Liberation says. What What do you espouse? This is a church that we believe in dignity, dignity of the uh, human spirit. We don't believe that we should bow down before a man-made god and repress any of our natural feelings. When I talk about the Satan force, I talk about the the energy that's within everyone, the carnal, the mundane. Um, we believe in in living life to its fullest. Uh, and don't be, uh, don't feel guilty about being human and having natural desires. And of course, common sense plays a very large role in all of this. Does that include having sex with each other, with family members? No, or? no, God, no. You, you know, you have to have your own code of ethics. You have to. What are yours? Um, well, using uh, respect for uh, your fellow man, uh, realizing that uh, dignity is involved. You know, people say that because I'm a Satanist, I'm immediately going to have sex with children, mutilate animals. Well, Satanists don't do that. Have you ever had sex with children? No. Or mutilated an animal? No. no. People like that are either, um, as I said uh, once before, either misplaced Christians or Christians gone bad. They're basing their beliefs on a, a Satan that the Catholic Church invented. You say in, in this background that, uh, uh, that Christianity is, uh, from the beginning, has been the most downgrading and destructive of all religions. The egos are not allowed to prosper and complement one's identity within the framework of Christianity because a healthy ego, uh, well, anyway, what do you have to say about Christianity and about Christ? Well, I believe that Jesus was a very brilliant man, but uh, he was a very astute Jew. And uh, history has proven time and time again that he never went about to form another religion or destroy Judaism. Um, I mentioned once before in a previous show that um, at the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D., by vote he was uh, made a god, and by vote they decided just how divine he was going to be. Um, that to me proves that uh, it's a false religion. It's based on myth. Um, and as far as the, I mentioned the ego, you need an ego to survive. You have to have that vanity that will keep you out of a gutter. There's nothing wrong with survival. There's nothing wrong with being a success. Satanists are successful people. How did you get involved in this? By education. Um, I went to a Catholic school until ninth grade. and uh, Believed in what then? Did you believe in I believed in nothing, time? but I was uh, forced to go to the school. And by ninth grade, I had had enough. I had asked too many questions that could not be answered. You know, I just got tired of uh, the priest saying, well, it's a mystery of the church. And I said, well, okay, if you don't know, then guess not. And I just started reading on my own. And I realized that all religions are man-made. You know, it's comforting to want to believe in something out there, you know, when you're in, you know, times of stress and pain, if you lose a family member or whatever. But uh, the strength has to come from you. And uh, that's what I've been working on. You say to be a Satanist means to follow one's natural instincts. 
to gratify every physical, emotional, and mental and sexual desire one has. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Well, I think it's self-explanatory. Um, there's nothing wrong with being sexual. Um, I see nothing wrong with premarital sex. I see nothing wrong with having a plethora of lovers, if you want. Uh, I'm not homosexual, but you know, I see nothing wrong with homosexuality. You know, it's 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 a human desire, something that's, of course, alien to me, but it happens. Um, but once again, common sense steps in. You know, with all the where does common sense step in there? Well, with all the diseases that are running rampant, you know, uh, you've got to be careful. And also, you don't take advantage of those who can't help themselves. You don't have sex with children. You don't have sex with animals. All right, now, if you don't, w w and let me interrupt, uh, you have a woman sitting here, and we're not going to do a lot. We're, we're going to assume that the, what she says she saw, she saw. All right. All right. What do you have to say to him? He's saying that this doesn't go on, that children don't have sex with members of the satanic cult and so forth. They always say that. Are they going to stand up and say that they're breaking the law? Okay, are they going to stand up and say, yes, look, this is what we do to the outside world when they know it is still against the law? Okay, there are, uh, there was a group, I think, that came to, to Maryland that wants the law passed so that they, uh, I, think, I think it was gays where they can uh, have sex with younger children or something like that. The NAMLA, the... Okay, yeah. if they could get laws passed where it wasn't against the law, then they, they would uh, make it public. Um, do thieves make it public, what they're doing? Okay, embezzlers, are they, they're out boasting in the middle of the street? No, because they don't want to be prosecuted. I have to ask you, Paul, why you, why you keep smirking at, at everything Oh, I'm not smirking, saying. I'm just laughing. Um, All right, laughing. Forthright. Um, because, forthright. well, obviously, if I was a child molester, I wouldn't sit here on television and admit it. That's common sense. But uh, to assume just because I have the guts to say that I am a Satanist that, um, you know, I've also got to have the uh, belief in child molestation is foolish. Um, if there are people out there who are doing it, they have to be stopped. Simple as that. And as far as NAMBLA, they should all be shot. You know, I've read their tenants. They're a bunch of sick individuals. You don't have sex with children. There are no consent or cons uh, consenting children. You can't sit there and say that a 12-year-old said I can have sex with either him or her. I would like to welcome to the program now our next guest. He is the Reverend James J. Labar, priest of the Archdiocese of New York. He is also the consultant on cults for the Archdiocese of New York. You have been for the last 12 years or so. That's correct. Right? What do you have to say to this uh, man here? Well, what I would have to say would take about five hours, but uh, briefly, I think we see a pattern that is so prevalent in so many parts of society today, we make up our words and we assign our own definitions to them and then we move along from there. Meaning what, sir? Well, in uh, his basic definitions, we can do whatever we want. That You ask him, does that include sexual things? And he says, yes, but then he says, no. He says, I wouldn't do that. Uh, he doubts the veracity of this lady uh, for no apparent reason because she... He can tell the truth, but she can't. Based on your research, sir, and your 12 years' experience in this field, how evil do you perceive this uh, satanic church that Paul Valentine heads? Well, it's only been in existence of, for a year, so it can't, you know, it Two hasn't years. had too much of an um, existence Couple in that years, sense. Yeah. But the, uh, you know, the problem I see is not whether this worldwide church is the evil section, but it's the problem behind it. You know, we can call uh, satanic activity good, that doesn't make it good. We can call it harmless, that doesn't make it harmless. We have to look at the facts that are in the world today. There are hundreds of children being abused in satanic rituals. There are many, many people telling us of problems that have come up, not over the last four or five years, but over the last 30 or 40 years. And these problems then come way before this particular church or Anton LaVey's Church of Satan, which was founded in 1967, 68, somewhere in there. Some of these areas come about in, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, when people had a real and true understanding of who Satan is and what he can do. How evil, sir, do you feel Satanism is in this country, personally? How do you f Satanism as a crime is very evil. Satanism as a religion is weird and also uh, very dangerous because it can actually bring up the uh, the devil and many of the activities associated with them. Uh, what this particular uh, gentleman is talking about, 
I really don't know how dangerous it is because there are so many mistruths in there, if you want to use that word. There are so many confusing things. I don't know whether he's telling the truth or not. I've, I've got to counter that. You said uh, in the beginning I was talking about sex at one point and then saying I do and I don't. Well, of course, I said sexual freedom, but it's sexual freedom with common sense. You know, it seems like every time I get into a discussion with anyone, they immediately bring up, well, you know, what about the sex with children? These people are not Satanists. They're uh, people who, you know, have to take a label, and it's easier to take Satan. Now, you know, I can name many cases where there have been fundamentalist Christians that have done the same thing, but no one seems to put that on the front page of the newspaper. You know, there are various denominations. There are, there, are, there is the lunatic fringe in every organization. You, well, like the fundamentalist. Uh, the Jimmy Swaggarts of the Christian denominations, there are lunatics in the satanic world. They have to be stopped. I've never said anything uh, other than that. But to accuse me just because I'm a satanist of uh, being that way is unfair. We'll be back in just a moment. this and we have done programs we had uh, we did a program recently and we had parents who, who said that their kids believed in Satan were bringing satanic books home uh, were, were making all kinds of marks we've heard and read stories where kids have killed parents they said in the name of Satan that Satan made me do this possess them to do that uh, there where have been people who have been on who said that they were involved in witnessed animal sacrifices in the name of Satan I want to know why this kind of activity that you deny do, uh, exists in all these people's mind. Why does it exist? And in what do you believe? When you have your ritual, what do you do? To whom do you pray? Or what do you say? Well, let me take first things first. Um, it's easy to say, you know, Satan made me do it. You know, it's the old term uh, into um, uh, a coin of phrase. Um, you know, the devil made me do it. Um, it's very easy. It's um, dramatic. You know, it's not going to matter to anyone if you said, well, Jesus told me to do it. They'll just lock you up. But, you know, the minute you say Satan, they're, of course, going to drag it out for everything it's worth and ultimately book rights and well, various other things. that's the reason that happens. Yes. Um, it, it's, you know, if you're going to rebel, what better way to rebel than use Satanism? Um, you know, you're not going to get me to believe that this kid who, the uh, gentleman you're talking about, I believe, was in New Jersey, stabbed his mother, then killed himself, actually had Satan come to him through the headphones of his Walkman and say, kill your mother. The kid was a lunatic. You know, simple as that. I think I have to object there because I happened to investigate that. The boy was a very good, honest student. He was a very proper student up until about six or seven weeks before the event happened. And then something got him going. Part of it was uh, the uh, heavy metal rock music with satanic mm. lyrics. A lot of it was... Uh, an interest. We don't know whether he was psychotic. We don't know whether he was a, a basket case or what happened to him. Well, as but I think the the important, you know, an important thing here is not to just presume because they don't agree with what you seem to think, and automatically they're erroneous. The mother this was, was a very lunatic. real situation it's been here. The mother. Okay, here's the type of kid who was under his mother's thumb. If she wanted to go to church at three o'clock in the morning, she dragged him. Um, she was just a fanatic about her religious beliefs. And yet, on the other side of the coin, she allowed him to have the heavy metal posters in his room, allowed him to play Dungeons and Dragons. So there was that dichotomy that didn't fit in that kid's head. So he goes off the deep end, stabs her 40 times in the face, and then kills himself. And they immediately think it was Satan. None of the police involved in the case really believe that it was satanic. What do you believe in? What do you do at your rituals or at your services? What do you say? Well, I'm not going to get into uh, what I do at my services because we're... Have you ever seen an animal sacrifice? No, it wouldn't be allowed in my organization. Have you I've ever never... seen a child have sex with an adult? No, I find it perverted. I wouldn't even watch it on a film. Would you take a lie detector test? Absolutely. I've done it before. Why yeah. did you advise... Uh, the, the, why were you an advisor on this new satanic movie called The Unholy that is just out? Oh, I'm not an advisor. Uh, what they're doing is they're tying in the fact that I'm a Satanist and making talk show appearances to... Uh, uh, show a film clip of the film. You're not a consultant no, to this film? No, I came along long after the uh, film was made. Then why should we show the clip? <laughs> I think Vestron would be quite happy with you if you did. Are you um, getting any money from that? No, not at all. 
uh, no stipends or anything. Basically, um, the film has a lot to offer, I think. Uh, sure, it has the dramatic demon at the end and all, but um, if you see the film, you'll understand uh, quite clearly that the demon represents sexual repression. As this gentleman can tell you, when you're a Catholic priest, you take a vow of celibacy. And the demon represents guilt. And once the priest, you know, allows himself to, uh, you know, you know, become a total human being and get involved oh in sex, the guilt takes over. All right, I'm going to hold the clip so I talk to my producer between the segments. Yes, go ahead. What are you thinking? Oh, well, I'm just listening to him rattling on and rattling on and rattling on. And um, he's going to try to convince you that what he's doing is right. But why won't he tell you what his rituals are all about? I don't why understand. won't he go into that? Because it's a closed secret society. We're a very exclusive group. I don't open it up to everyone. You know, people so we pay can me believe to get any way we want, then, exactly. that maybe you are doing these things and you won't tell oh, us. Oh, sure, but there's no way I can prove I can't, or I'm not doing it unless uh, you were involved in one of my workings. But then again, I could easily stage it where it was harmless. You have to, well, you don't have to believe me, but it's my word against anyone else well, with all due respect you just said you could always stage it so that oh, it would yeah. be harmless yeah. which suggests mm -hmm. that if we were to see what you really did it wouldn't be harmless no i just said it before anyone else did i mean if i were the type of person who was killing animals mutilating children having sex with children well i certainly wouldn't do it on camera i would invite you to come in and i would have this very whitewashed little ritual then you'd all walk away happy well that's not what i would do i would just soon say my tenants are my own you know you have to be part of the church but why does it have to have a closed door? You can walk into any re Christian religion at any given time. People invite people to their churches. There's you power know. in mystery. There's power in secrecy. So you see yourself as a powerful church? Oh, definitely. Um, I'm, I've said from day one that uh, my one goal is to start the uh, wheels in motion to bring an end to Christianity. All right. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, uh, yes. I'm an uh, I'm ex-Satanist and cultist. Yeah, hold on. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, I'm an ex-Satanist and, and, uh, and cultist, and I would like to make some comments. First off, I'm the, uh, area, or I'm, I'm the area authority in this. I work with the police and the Warnicky Ministries and other folks. And to say that the cultists or the satanic cultists don't abuse children is incorrect. About uh, approximately one month ago, I had a call from a group that was sacrificing their own children, and mm -hmm. one of the ladies wanted to come out of... Uh, this particular group and she had stated living in the community uh, of believers they would have their own children and they would sacrifice their own children mm -hmm. and they also have sex with their children it even goes as far as uh, putting their children in uh, caskets with dead bodies and lowering them into the ground and covering them over with dirt also parents will take uh, ritual knives and teach their children how to stab dead bodies correctly mm. as they do in the sacri sacrifices that, that are performed. Sir, what did you witness yourself with your own eyes? Well, I've seen, I've seen a great deal of dynamic activity. Uh, myself, only animal sacrifice, never human. But I work with people who have actually done the human sacrifice end of it. You see, that the reason why they do the human sacrifice or, and or the animal sacrifice is to gain power from the devil. This man, this man's misrepresenting the mainline satanic cult, uh, which is mainly called the Brotherhood, and they believe in total human sacrifice because that's the only way they can gain power. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Hold it. I want proof. Once again, I want proof of everything that you're saying. You know, it's nice to say that you know all these people who uh, kill people and stuff, but I want proof. You know, it's easy to sit there and say, well, I've seen this. And you mentioned you've witnessed demonic activity. Did you see a demon? You know, you've got to learn to get your adjectives straight. You know, this has been going on for years. You know, I want proof. If this is going on, you've got to stop the people. You don't call up talk shows and mention it. You go to the police. That's what the police are for. I've consulted with police many times myself. I've opened my doors to them. They know what I am. They know what I rep uh, represent. You haven't opened your doors so they could attend one of your services, though. They just, haven't asked. Well, see, the know. thing is, is I, I'm, I'm the one they call a lot of times to investigate, uh, to explain the different uh, types of areas that they run into, like if it's, a, if it's a ritual sacrifice or if a person's got books or if there's a, a, a possible homicide that's not a suicide or whatever. But the point is, is it's proven, and there are now police agencies that only investigate cult-related mm -hmm. activities such as murders, abductions, and, and so forth. 
and even in Maryland uh, since 1981, the satanic, uh, I guess you'd call cult activity, is up over 600 percent. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is, is this is whitewashing it. They always want proof. They always want so on and so forth. You can check your police blotters, and you can find where police have unsolved crimes that have satanic origins. Even um, I why is there was it a satanic? crime out in um, in Frostburg where where a ritual was performed. They found the person, and approximately a year later, the ritual was mocked again, and the police have still never come up with anything on that. I want to thank you for, uh, for your contributions to the show, and we'll let you respond and talk to some members in the audience okay. right after this. This is uh... Father Michael. He's taken over Father Dennis's church. He wants to speak with you. Hello, my name is to attend. For tickets and further information, call 732-5600. We've heard a lot of false information here, one thing being that Christians did not believe in the divinity of Christ until the third century after the accounts of Nicaea. That's false. It was a belief from the very beginnings of Christianity, and the church really made that church dogma. You had to believe that in order to call yourself a Christian. They just... Uh, uh, made it clear it was always a belief. The other thing is I'm interested in you telling us how many children you have with a loose sex that you are uh, supportive of. Well, first of all, you know, just because you believe in something doesn't necessarily make it fact. Uh, what the Council of Nicaea did was bring that uh, belief system together and form what's called the modern Christian church. Um, two, I don't believe in loose sex. I believe in free sex with, you know, common sense. Have you fathered I have, more than 30 children? I have 33. All right. So. You have fathered 33 children? Yes. You provide for them? Yes, I do. How do you do that? Where do you well, I'm certainly not a poor individual. and uh, what, is that, what does that mean? I don't understand. Well, I'm, I'm pretty well-to-do financially. And uh, the women that have, uh, you know, born my children are very well-to-do themselves. You know, we're talking doctors, lawyers. Uh, one is a professor of psychology at a state university. These are not welfare mothers. You know, these are successes. That's why they're Satanists, and they're all members of my church. How many, how many children have you fathered with someone other than your wife since you've been married? I have no children by my wife. No. So, have Oh, since I've been married, none. Uh, we've only been married six months. Uh, how many uh, people have you had sex with other than your wife since you've been married? None. I'm very monogamous with my wife. Mm -hmm. There is that responsibility. There, uh, you know, there are priorities. <laughs> but you've had 33 kids uh, on, on the way up. That busy man. Yes, sir. I'd just like to ask one question, and that's this. For something that's so powerful, why is the need for secrecy? I've never known power to confine itself to secrecy. It's, it's very secret. open. It's well, first of all, it's... You know, there are no levels in my church. Basically, it's an occult think tank, a satanic think tank, if you wish. Um, our, there are no set policies. We're just a bunch of like-minded or like-minded individuals that will correspond, whether it be through the mail, over the telephone, or face-to-face. -face. But as far as when we do our magical workings, it's very private. You know, what we're working on is our own business, no one else's. You know, uh, church tenants are open for anyone. You know, I hand them out in the church manifest. Uh, the police in New Haven have it. Uh, but as far as what we do when we do a magical working, you know, we have to keep it secret. You know, there's power in that secrecy. I'm still, I still wonder how, how well-to-do you have to be, thanks, to support 33 children. I mean, Well, I don't do it all, you know. And don't you think bringing 33 kids into this world was irresponsible on your No, part? because one, all these women uh, wanted to have a child of mine. Uh, I believe that immortality is through one's children. I don't believe in uh, the Christian concept of life after death. So your ego, you were talking about egos. Is your ego that big that you want at least 33? I'll have 100 ones? if I can. Sir? I'll have 100 if I can. You know, these are, I would never have a child that could not be taken care of. You know, that's just not my style. These are all children that are taken yeah. care of. Can I range? interject here just a moment? I think uh, this is another example of making one's own rules. We 
most everybody in society sees that as a bit bizarre. But I would like to clarify just one point that would help us understand a bit what's going on here. We actually have three different kinds of satanic activity. And the ones that, that uh, the gentleman over here is talking about would be the church, the church's kind, uh, church of Satan, church of worldwide church and such, who may very well do no uh, sacrifices whatsoever. There are young people who dabble in it, who uh, find the fascination with the devil, be it the Christian devil or the imaginary devil. And then you have the real cultists, like the Brotherhood, like the Process Church, who feel that crime is the way to find the answer. We have so a, we're talking about three different things here. We have a young lady here who, ju who is uh, with you. And what did you just tell me? Um, well, I'm a very close friend of Paul's. Um, I'm also a member of his church, and I am carrying his child. And Number I'd, 34? Uh, yes. <laughs> and I would just like... Are you his wife? No, I'm not. Okay, I thought okay. It's a contradiction I met her, right there. No, I met her long before I married my wife. All right, how pregnant? I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have, you have, you have his child. Uh, um, wh yes. Why? Why? Um, because I wanted to have his child. Why? Because, you know, I'm a very good friend of the man. I know him very well. I have well. lots of good friends. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. No, I mean, yes, I mean it's, a, respect, it's I mean, a bizarre question to ask. I mean, why would anyone want to have a child with anyone? Obviously, it's very I personal reasons between the two of us. But he has 33 other children that you're aware of. Yes, that's why it's not bizarre. I mean, uh, help help me answer the question. Then. No, we obviously love each other. Uh, oh, she is. We obviously love each other dearly, and she wanted a child. Um, she's able to take care of it herself, even if I were to die tomorrow and uh, leave her nothing, which would not happen. But um, and she wanted to have a child at a young age. She didn't want to wait until she was thirty for her first child. Are you well to do? Yes. How well to do are you? I make. Enough so I don't have to. Are you to a work. millionaire? Oh no, but I'll get there sooner or later. I'm a Satanist. We'll be back in a moment. Richard's Wardrobe, provided by J.S. Edwards Limited. Fine men's clothing in the Hilton Inn Plaza, Pikesville. Guests of People Are Talking stay at the luxurious Omni International Hotel, the entertainment headquarters of Baltimore. Let us entertain you. You wanted to make a comment, sir? It sounds like to me that uh, the way to foster Satan worship is the fostering of offspring of Satan. And to me, it seems very simple. Satan made me do it. We don't worship Satan. But nonetheless, I, that's how I would perceive it. And also, I think the point is, Satan is a master of deception. And that's mm -hmm. what we always need to keep in mind. We never know the truth. Exactly. Lorraine, you want to make a final comment? We're almost out of time. Um, it's just that uh, they will never tell the truth. They have to be exposed. They have to be found out. And I think as long as uh, we keep talking about it, people keep coming out and standing up and not fearing them and telling what's going on, that eventually with the exposure, you know.